Alright, tonight we saw Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. The fourth movie in the Planet of the Apes reboot franchise, which uh, started as a movie where James Franco teaches a monkey algebra, and now it's something entirely different. Connor, what is the plot of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? In our uh, newest century of King of Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, um, Caesar died in the previous movie, Planet of the Apes 3, whichever one that was, I think it was War for the Planet of the Apes, or maybe that was number two, whatever. But Caesar's dead, and now the uh, apes have broken into factions, much like humans did. And have become somewhat of a tribal race at this point, but... 300 years in the future. Yep, definitively have the planet. There's very few humans left. Most of them are illiterate and essentially reverted back to, like, caveman era. While well, some are not illiterate. But a ape named Noah starts traveling around and he meets an orangutan who tells him about Caesar... He's like, whoa, Caesar's kind of cool, I guess. But then he meets other monkeys that think Caesar is Jesus. And uh, certain monkeys are preaching his words or twisting them to their own agendas. And maybe big government monkey and not commune monkey bad. So then they get in, they fight the evil monkeys with a girl that they come up with around the way. Um, I mean, there's the uh, human that likes the monkeys or something and is basically a, uh, well, not to sugarcoat it, but he's a, uh, he's an Uncle John, you know? Kind of a little, that, I don't know about the wink, that's a little weird, but. You know, he's like, he's like, he likes the monkeys because they're safe, it's safe, and he's scared to rise up and fight for equal rights for humans and monkeys. And then, uh, yeah, they find like a weapon stash, but then the whole place gets flooded, and then they're like, wow, look at that, it's a spaceship. Yep. And now, the sixth. Presumably the sixth movie in Planet of the Apes. We'll see a new... Probably not. I was going to say like a like a beefy white man. Like Charleston Heston and Mark Wahlberg respectively in their versions of the original Planet of the Apes movie. But no, It's probably going to be like Idris Elba or something. Uh, yeah, I'd be fine with Idris Elba. He's kind of got the uh, tough man vibes. I'd be fine with that. Cool. I was thinking that like... I don't know. They'll pick someone fucking weird and it'll probably be terrible. As is all the Planet of the Apes straight remakes. But, Aiden, what are your thoughts on Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? The last of the five prequels before That's Planet the of the Apes. Yes. The last of the four prequels. Uh, it's good, I think. It's really weird. It's really, really weird. Um... <laughs> It's insane that this is like a big blockbuster franchise when the first movie was like James Franco teaches a monkey to do algebra and then the monkey gets put in a zoo and beats up Draco Malfoy. And now we're at... Well, then they did. Then Matt Reeves did his What If the Monkeys Were the in What the If Holocaust. the Monkeys Had Guns. Yeah. Yeah, the monkeys do get holocausted, and then the monkeys have a full-blown war where they ride horses and fire machine guns, and there's a civil war with the monkeys. Yeah. And in this one, we get a Lord of the Rings-style fantasy sci-fi epic where a monkey sets out on a grand adventure across the world and sees many things and gets in monkey fights and trains eagles. There's a lot of weird shit going on. It's very strange. And it makes it really funny that these are big blockbuster movies. Um, this the guy who shot this one, the Blade Runner guy, 
Who's not a Blade Runner. The, Maze Runner. Maze Runner. Don't not Blade Runner. Absolutely not Blade Runner. The fucking Maze Runner guy. Um, West has, Ball. West Ball definitely goes all out on making this movie weird and interesting. But he shoots movies in a boring way most of the time. There's a couple good looking shots, but a lot of this movie looks boring. And um, I mostly just appreciate how weird it is and funny. I like that the um, the evil gorilla ape guy is like obsessed with the Roman Empire because he thinks that the Caesar from the Roman Empire was like the precursor to the monkey Caesar. And um, I, I, I don't know, there, there's some cool monkey fight action. It's very silly and strange and kind of hard to describe um, in that it's a little bit of everything like a fantasy epic adventure sci-fi dystopian post-apocalyptic action romp uh, it, it, it does it hits a little bit of everything um, I'm kind of interested to see where it goes with the spaceship coming back, which will presumably lead to something that resembles the original movie, which will be weird. Um, it'd be nice if Matt Reeves was still around, because Matt Reeves has a lot more vision than Wes Ball, but I can't deny that I had fun watching this weird fucking post-Marvel experimental blockbuster about monkeys on horses throwing eagles at each other. Um, yeah, it's 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 it, it's it's really something, and I had fun. Connor, what do you think of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is what happens in a post cinematic universe world when the cinematic universe bubble gets popped by COVID and all the hype that. Marvel and DC and stuff we're riding on is now completely eliminated to the point where no one cares about cinematic universes anymore and studios have reverted back to a time I like to call 2007 to 2011 but more boring and safe. What they did was they took a lot of the techniques from the cinematic universe movies but they're back to like that era of loose continuity sequels, endless loose continuity sequels instead of making a movie and spinning it into another movie, spinning it into another movie. This is Planet of the Apes Reboot Series 2 number 4. Um, honestly, the trajectory of this series almost feels like the Matt Reeves movies never, like the Matt Reeves movies could have never happened and this could have just been a long strung sequel to the James Franco Planet of the Apes movie I mean, and it would have worked less, yeah. exactly the same and actually from a feel how the texture is of the movie it's a lot more like that first Planet of the Apes second reboot movie yeah, it's a lot than to, the Matt Reeves movies, which were like dark, a lot cleaner depressing, and more simple. Weird. They're very bright, Marvel esque cinematography. It's very clean and pulled. simple, like the first one. I call not. it this era. The this film is another one in the Transformers: The Last Night of or uh, Transformers: The Rise of Beastification of Hollywood, where. I started noticing that really hard with Transformers The Rise of Beast, but these movies that aren't really in cinematic universes and are just like sequels to tired film franchises that don't die and are staples of the lineup, you know? Like the studios like Untitled Transformers sequel, Untitled Planet of the Apes sequel, etc., you know? Like once the last one comes out it's thrown back on the calendar and then they just find some fucking B-string guy to try to replicate what the old movies did while also uh, making it more safe where the vision is stripped out and now it's just a Marvel movie and much like Marvel movies they're hit or miss because you package everything in a very okay format and then from there it's up to the script 
which for Transformers for the Rise of Beasts or whatever is a ended up being a disaster, especially in that third act. This movie stays pretty consistent throughout. Uh, one problem I think it suffers from is wanting to be from a length perspective, I think Warner Brothers wanted it to be comparable to the Matt Reeves ones, which were long as shit, as is Matt Reeves' Batman and surely just Matt Reeves' style as someone yeah. who wants to create epics. But those movies this, were very complicated and. Those movies were very complicated up and weird. And, and weird <laughs> epics about apes. About ape oppression. About ape oppression. This movie is a popcorn chomping blockbuster about ape oppression in a very fucking blockbuster format. You have a young lead who hasn't been in fucking anything. That, that's the other thing about tired blockbusters. You're like, who the fuck is this lady? I've never seen her before. And then it's like, here's her portfolio of... Here's her portfolio of three streaming television projects she's done, or Game of Thrones or whatever. And we got William H. Macy to be Uncle Tom for six minutes. Yeah, William H. Macy was the closest thing <laughs> to, like, an actual star they had in this movie. The Planet of the Apes' is star power throughout the years has always been kind of flimsy in this reboot. They got James Gunn to do one. They got Gary Oldman to do one. They got Woody Harrelson. They got the Woody guy Harrelson to do the, one. <laughs> He's the good guy in the in the one with. Uh, I think that was the one with Gary Oldman. With Gary Oldman, yeah, Gary Oldman's the villain in that one. And this lady's like really, rela like really boring. Yeah, she's not very like good. Like Gen Z insert character that looks like somebody was taken off of TikTok and they splashed her with some dirt and said. You're the smart lady in the sea of monkeys or whatever. And yeah. she said, okay. And then she danced around a bunch of ping pong balls for two hours, and then they made it into a movie later. Because that's what they did. Um, so yeah, it's the Transformers last notification in that you take away, you basically emulate the old movies, remove the auteur and any sort of touch they had, and I'll call Michael Bay a trash auteur, much like Zack Snyder's a trash auteur. Yeah. So you get some, like, safe guy no one's ever heard of who has, like, five or six movies under their belt that were like, oh, that came to theaters, but it, it's never... They don't have you, enough you want to, to push the studio around? Yeah, you want to remove... You want to remove the filmmaker and have some guy that can manage a team that and listens and says thumbs up to everything the studio wants and that's exactly what this movie was like front yeah. to back just like that new Transformers movie hence the Transformers the rise of beast suffocation of Hollywood which we see ourselves in currently a new era where the cinematic universe suffers and we're gonna start seeing some post cinematic universe cinematic universe content which would be kind of interesting like Deadpool, and James Gunn is going to take a swing at trying to revive the cinematic universe. Yep. So the next couple of years of post-COVID, this, this is just another relic of post-COVID, pre-cinema <coughs> figuring itself out again. Hollywood movie, blockbuster movie, as was a lot of things by the fact that this is already like the fifth highest grossing movie of the year after one weekend. And it's not like a major franchise or anything. And in fairness, Godzilla X Kong is sitting at, I think, number one right now or number two. Oh no, number two under Dune. But Dune's like the only movie that's come out this year that anyone actually that had any like monicum of hype. And people were just like, I guess I'll see Godzilla vs. Kong, which is also Transformers The Last Nightification that of Hollywood. That one is very true. It's definitely Rise of Beast. Of yeah, so. This is where we're at in Hollywood right now. Was this movie bad? No. It was very safe. And... Perhaps overly long. But for the most part, it was fine. So, Aiden, would you recommend Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Yes. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes 
is a very strange movie to be a blockbuster. It's entertaining and fun little adventure movie that is about monkeys on horses. I'm easily amused, perhaps, by the monkey movie, but I had a good time with it. Um, it's a little safer and cleaner than the Matt Reeves one. It definitely, absolutely does not hit the heights of Matt Reeves' Planet of the Apes movies. But I think it's a, a fairly good and interesting time and something uh, a little outside of the norm of the very cape shitty stuff we normally get, including like Godzilla vs. Khan, the new empire, which is just cape shit. This movie, at least, is not cape shit. Yeah. Uh, so, Connor, would you recommend Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Yeah, I mean, nothing else is coming out this year, apparently. Well, what yeah. the fuck else do we have to look forward to? None of the cape shit companies are taking up all their weekends, so they're all getting filled with B-stringers. So, I mean, I have most of my uh, my alarm bells on my AMC app set up for what we got this year, and we'll just put it bluntly, it's looking grim. It's looking pretty um, grim. And I look forward to three to four years from now, when untitled Planet of the Apes movie that's surely already greenlit finally it comes through my AMC app as coming out in a couple months so I can pre-order my movie ticket to sit in the corner and say that was another Planet of the Apes movie <laughs> yeah as per every Planet of the Apes movie none of which we've missed yet we've never missed no. a Planet of the Apes we never skipped one and yeah. the, I'm not like a particular fan of Planet of the Apes but I like the current Planet of the Apes series. I think all the movies have been good. I've seen the uh, remake. The original remake, Remake 1. Yeah. I own all the Planet of the Apes movies. I think I've seen the first one at some point. Within the last year, I just can't remember. I saw one of them. Also, while we're here, um, I went on a solo movie excursion and I saw Taro. Um, it was very stupid B-horror movie, and I kind of had fun with it. I don't think I'd recommend it though. And Abigail, which was by the guys who made the Scream reboot movies, and also uh, Ready or Not, which I also saw and Connor didn't. And Abigail was a lot of fun and good, and I would, re I would recommend it, but I probably wouldn't recommend Taro, just, just to get that on the record. All right, those will show up on the year end roundup as well. I was gone on a trip for a week, so I missed those, and I'm not going back for them, so that's what, that's our opinions. I trust Aiden's opinion, and I also trust that I'm never going to watch either of those movies in my entire life. I like to have a girl, it's fun. And I'm never going to watch that movie in my entire life, <laughs> because I'm guessing it's a three-star horror movie by the creators of the three-star Scream reboot series. But they also did the four star ready or not. Which one's four ready star. or not? I think I've seen that one. You didn't see that one because yeah. I saw that while you were working one day. No, it was like the lady, right? She's like the lady and like yeah. there and there. Yeah, I saw that one actually. Yeah. I own it on Voodoo now. Yeah, I like so. I got it on sale because Corey's like, we should watch Ready or Not. It's a good movie. Yeah, Ready or Not's a good movie. Yeah. Abigail's very, very similar to that movie in a lot of ways. Mm. It's not. It's, it's not, not like very scream. scream where they where try it's like to sit there and be like, "The Last Jedi," and whatever. Like, oh my gosh, the Last Jedi is really good. Well, do they hear that? I don't think they're actually involved with Scream Three, Scream Seven. Yeah, I think they moved on from that. But they fired the one Palestinian lady because Jenna Ortega's on-screen sister, because she's like, I think the Israelis are bad, and <laughs> they're like, "Well, you're fired." <laughs> <laughs> They probably attacked your bank account directly and...